Howdy folks, in the previous episode we looked at um, how to create a Java Spring Boot application from scratch, configure Docker Maven plugin to generate Docker image, and later using Docker Compose we brought up MySQL and our Java Spring application running two separate Docker containers using one very simple command um, that was docker dash compose space up. Today we're going to look at how we want to set up MySQL potentially. Uh, connecting to your database and then executing, you know, good old SQL th through simplistic and straightforward isn't the most convenient way to operate over the data. Map it in a set of domain objects and manipulate, you know, relational content. In other words, we could go whole nine yards and can talk about objectional relational mappers, also known as ORMs. But I personally think that one should always spend some time doing something called feasibility study in software development before deciding the technology stack. Being a seasoned full stack .NET developer by profession and you know for six plus years myself I have chosen between ORMs uh, over the time between Entity Framework and Link to SQL and, and Hibernate as well as some something called micro ORMs like Dapper in my various .NET applications for various reasons. Um, the point I'm trying to make here is always look at the, the requirements, you know, for, for example, in this application, I could need, I may need, you know, uh, at least uh, five queries at the most, or so in that case, directly querying the SQL data might yield smaller footprint for my application. So I would leave, you know, hybrid demo using Spring and Docker for some other time in future. Now, as always, let's start, you know, low and slow from the ground up. So first, I want to basically see if I can connect to Docker um, using my MySQL command. So let me do this where I would head over to my okay my terminal and I'm gonna try to gracefully shut down and then I'm it's always a good idea to issue Docker. Compose down to to basically deconstruct our Docker Compose. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to see if I can go ahead and run my just MySQL, plain vanilla MySQL. So let's say you're doing development and you want to use MySQL. You don't really need to time spend time to really install and set it up. You can just install MySQL Workbench and use Docker to your actual advantage, and you don't really need a to install MySQL locally, you can just use it over off the Docker for your own purpose, and that's how you can have your local, you know, um, development environment. I want to try to see if I can scan for a available instance, and I got one that I just created. And let me go ahead. use my username and password that I set up. I'm going to test it. It works. And I'm going to try to connect it. There we go. Nice and easy. The Epidemics database is right here. But the thing is, it's empty. I want to do some setup. So let's look at that. Now, and how we can we do about this? Okay, let me disconnect. And I'm gonna say, I wanna go ahead and stop and remove my MySQL container. So Docker PSA would yield me nothing. That's expected. Now, I basically wanna go ahead and do this where I have um, right ahead the time and created my two SQL uh, scripts. So this data, this script would do nothing but just create one simple table inside my epidemics table called login. It's abstract enough and it will give you the idea about how you know I want to set up something. And I have next script that would basically go ahead and set up my logins. It's just inserting the data. I'm just populating my data in that database table I created earlier. 
can I have just one script that does both? Sure, but then if your application is growing, it would become hard and painful to just maintain one file. You know, the more file and then you want to collaborate, it just becomes pain to maintain that way. Too many merge conflicts in team environment. So um, actually, it would be even a good idea to, you know, break it down these things further as it suits your needs. Um, but for me, I think uh, breaking, breaking it down in schema and data, um, so, uh, you know, as two files is, is enough for my demo purpose. So the goal is to basically go ahead and try to reconnect to my, I need to fire up my SQL again, and now it's a refresh. So just to prove that these two scripts work, I'm going to go ahead and copy this script and I'm going to paste it in my SQL. Execute it works. I'm going to close it. And I'm going to go to second one, copy it, close this guy, paste it, works. Now I'm going to close this guy and try to refresh my tables. So now I see my table not just being created, but also I see some data. It's just a test data, doesn't really matter what it is, but you see the data. Now, I had to do this manually. Every time I'm going to go ahead and, and, and you know remove my container, I'm going to lose this data. How can I at least automate this? In the future, we may even talk about how can we persist this data. But let's, for now, let's go, you know, uh, low and slow and let's talk about how can we automate this so it would be tedious so I'm going to disconnect and remove my connection and the idea now is um, to go ahead and basically look at hub.docker so now I've disconnected so I cannot connect that's expected um, here as you can see All right. So, um, here it says me that how can I initialize a fresh instance? It says that um, this thing would execute is capable to execute the files with extensions sh, sql, and compressed sql. Uh, that was found in this particular directory inside docker. Now, how do we know this directory? Well, let's go and figure it out. So, we're going to go. We know that our docker is running for the last three minutes. So, let's do docker exec hyphen it for interactive and tty, as you remember. And I'm going to specify the name of the container. And I'm going to say, I want to go and use bash for this command. I'm going to simply say ls hyphen la. And here it is docker entry point in db.d. Now let's go inside the directory and let's see what it is. It's an empty directory, but our goal is to put the 01 and 02 scripts that we created inside this directory. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to exit out and 
out to docker rmf mysql so I basically destroyed my mysql container and with that I also destroyed the SQL scripts I ran and the database I set up. So all my data, the, the, the login table I created, the data I put into it, it's gone. Um, so how can we go to our IDE back and we want to, actually I need to show you one more thing. I need to come clean. I have, I have to update my Docker version. So just so that if you're following this, I just want to make sure that you don't pull up your hair and figure out why is it not working for you. So my Docker version is 18.03 and Docker Compose is 1.18. You can go on the internet and you can figure out how to update this. Um, the reason we had to do that is we had to go ahead and use a newer version of the Docker file to make it you know, easy for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to update to 2.3. So my current version would go ahead and support this. So as you know, uh, formats and all that change, the Docker guys would release a new version of Docker Compose. We want to use new formats, so we're going to have to update to new version of Docker Compose. That sounds evident, right? Okay. We're going to say that. I want to assign a volume and I want to bind so it's basically like you're mirroring it so if you delete from your docker container it's gonna go ahead and delete you know that file from your hard drive so be careful guys you know um, it's not copying anymore it's actually you know like a live shared folder kind of thing that you guys do in, in VirtualBox um, so we are going to go ahead and we are telling it that everything that you have inside your database you want to copy into docker entry point init db inside the target so your source is this directory and your target is the docker container directory okay so with that being said let's head back to our terminal and say docker compose up So we're gonna, we are basically going to go ahead and bring up everything together. But my actual point I'm trying to make here is when we connect to MySQL, we should basically have our database ready to go. We, we should not need to execute the scripts manually anymore. And our web server should not be affected by this. So let's see what's going on. All right, looks like our web app, app is already up and running. And I don't really have any dependency for my web app to run. If I was to use, let's say, in Hibernate, or I'm mean, sorry, I'm sorry, Hibernate uh, for my Spring Boot for as ORM, I might have dependency for my Spring Boot application to, to have database accessible first. There are ways how to do it, and we can talk about it in future videos. For for now, let's talk. Let's focus on setting up our elementary database setup. Okay, I'm gonna scroll back. All right, so now our SQL Server is up and running. We're gonna spin up, and we are gonna try to see if we can connect. Now let's do this. then open the connection okay see this I see the login table not only that I have my data too well that's all for POC that proves the point that we are trying to make and we gotta do our smoke test right our we are still speaking the veil and it's live so Alright guys, enjoy your Sunday afternoon. I hope this helps.